Hello, welcome back to my channel, Charlie's Lessons. And if you're a teacher thinking about using Google Meet in 2023, then this video is for you. My name is Charlie. I've been an English teacher for over 12 years and I'm currently a director of studies at a language school in Spain. And I wanted to make this video about Google Meet because it's changed a lot over the last few years. And so if you're thinking about using it, then this video is gonna help you ensure that you have a smooth online classroom experience. So the first thing is getting set up on Google Meet, which is really easy. All you need is a Google account, which most people do have nowadays. If you have an email address that ends in at gmail.com, then you have a Google account. Now, Google Meet, there are also paid options. I will not be talking about those. I'll only be talking about the free version, so the version that's open to everyone. So where do you find Google Meet? The first place to look is in the apps launcher here just in the top right hand corner and we just look for this icon which is called meet. We just click on this and we can start the meeting from here. Alternatively, directly from your browser, all you need to do is visit meet.google.com. Now there is a third way of launching Google Meet meetings and this is from your Google Calendar, but I'm gonna show you that later when we talk about scheduling meetings. So at the home page for Google Meet, we have a new meeting option or enter a code or link. So obviously here the blue button is for hosts like you and me as the teacher and enter a code or link is for your students. So once you've provided them with the code or the link, this is where your students are going to input that data. So if we want to start a meeting, all we need to do is click on this button and we're gonna have three options. We can either create a link that's gonna start a meeting for later we can start a meeting right now, or we can go into Google Calendar and make a meeting for a later date. The third and final option is to schedule in Google Calendar, and this is one I use a lot. So if we click on here, it's then gonna immediately open an event, and it's gonna give you a link that's linked to this event. So you can see here, here is the link for the meeting. So imagine you're scheduling a class, a private class with Sarah, we can change the times, we can change the date, and we can also specify whether this class repeats or not. So a lot of my classes that I schedule online, they do repeat. And sometimes I just need to use the custom feature. So I go to custom and I tell Google Meet or Google Calendar in this case, when the classes take place and with what frequency. So for example, does it repeat every day, every week, every month, etc.? Which days and when do the classes end? So we've got three options here. Does it never end or does it end on a certain date or do I want Google Calendar to count the amount of times this happens and it's ready to go. All I do is click on this copy conference info button here and I would send this to my students. And if I go to save, it's now going to appear on my Google Calendar right here. I can launch the meeting directly from here just by clicking this blue button. If you'd like to learn how Google Meet compares to other video software like Zoom, then why don't you go check out my other video right here. Now with all Google applications, they're usually interconnected. So this works really well with Google Meet and Google Calendar in that I can now see the class I created is now appearing on my Google Meet homepage. So you can imagine if you've got numerous classes set up on Google Calendar, when you go on to Meet, you're gonna have all your classes is ready to go just by clicking on them here and by joining them like this. So how do you get your students to join your meeting? Well, we just saw three ways we can start the meeting and where we can find the link to the meeting. Once the students have pasted this link directly into their browser, they're just gonna press enter and it's gonna ask for permission to use their camera or microphone. You're gonna to need to say allow, otherwise obviously you can't hear them. And the student's also gonna to need to include their name. So let's say, let's call this student, let's call this person Sarah. Once a student has input the link into their browser and asked to join, the host will get a message like this, telling the host that someone wants to join the call. Now you've got two options, you can either deny them entry or admit them. Now, if you deny them entry, the student can still try again later. So I'm just gonna let them in, and we can see here that the student has successfully joined the meeting. Now, once the student has joined the meeting, there are a couple of things you can do as the host to control what your students can and can't do. The first thing is to mute your students. To do this, we just click on this show everyone icon on the bottom right-hand corner, and click on this, looks like the volume setting almost. So we click on this, 
and it's going to ask us if we'd like to mute this student for everyone on this call. Now, you as the host can only mute students. If the students would like to unmute themselves, they can. They have the freedom to do that. So a second option is to remove the student from the call. To do this, we just click on the three dots right here and we click remove from the call. And there are two things we can obviously do additionally. We can file a report against a student or we can block them from gaining entry again. Now, usually this is not necessary, especially if a student would like to re-enter because having a technical problems. So I would just click on remove. If you do teach online and you'd like to learn the basics, then I did a video on the basics of teaching online just right here. So once you're in your class and you have all your students in the meeting and you'd like to share something with them, then all we need to do is go to this button here, which is called present now. When we click on this, we've got three options. Now, each of these options are going from smaller to bigger. So for example, a tab is the smallest thing you can share with your students, whereas your entire screen, well, obviously that is everything that you can see on your screen. I tend to switch between tabs and windows. So for example, if we click on tab, then we're gonna get a selection of all the tabs. There should be a list here of all the tabs that you'd like to share with your students. If you're sharing audio, make sure that you've got this selected, otherwise the students won't be able to hear it. If we go to share a window, then we've got a number of different options here. So all the windows that are open on your computer. And when you go to entire screen, if you're using more than one screen, then you should have the options of a second screen here. If you are going to share your screen and you're going to be switching between multiple tabs, then I would recommend choosing the option window. If you choose tabs and you decide to change from one tab to another, then the students will not see that change and they will only see the initial tab that you shared. When you're teaching an online class, if you're not sharing your screen, then you're probably using an online whiteboard. Now, Google Meet has two options. Google has its own Jamboard, which is their own whiteboard, or they have a third party one integrated into Google Meet called Miro. To use the Jamboard, we're just gonna go and click on activities in the bottom right hand corner. You'll see a square, triangle and a circle. And we'll go to whiteboarding. Now this is the Jamboard. Once we click on this, we'll go to start a new whiteboard and it will launch a Jamboard in front of the host screen. If we go to the student screen for a moment, you'll see that in the chat function, a link has been sent to the student. Now, if the student does not have a Google account, they will not be able to collaborate or see this whiteboard. If your student does not have a Google account, then you can just simply share the tab which contains the Jamboard right here. If you'd like to use the third party whiteboard called Miro, then we're gonna click on activities again and we're gonna drop down to the bottom which is called Miro whiteboard. And we click on this and it's gonna ask us if we'd like to make an account or create a board without registration. I usually just click on create a board directly. And it's also got the Google Meet videos on the side, so it's integrated into the software. Now, again, if we go to the student's view, the student is currently not seeing anything. So all we need to do is go back to the host view and start collaboration. Once you've done that, the student's view will get an invitation to join the Miro board. Now, again, if the student does not have a Google account, they will not be able to collaborate on this whiteboard. If you teach adults online one-to-one, -one, then you're probably gonna be interested in how to plan a lesson from start to finish, which is a video I made right here. To interact with your students in the classroom, you've obviously got the audio and video features, but you've also got the chat function, and the students have an option called raise their hand, which is when students would like to draw your attention to them. So for chatting with your students, all we need to do is click on the chat function at the bottom right hand corner next to activities, and we can start writing a message to everyone. In Google Meet, you can only send messages to the whole class, not individual students. Now on the student screen, if they would like to get your attention as the teacher, then they would just need to click on this button, which is called raise their hand. Once they click this, and if we go to the teacher's screen, then we can see here that there is a notification saying that one student has raised their hand. Let's take a look at how we can change our background on Google Meet or add effects or filters. Now, as the teacher, you might be interested in covering what's behind you, and the students themselves might be also interested in not showing what's behind them to the class, and also using the effects and filters, particularly if you've got shy students in the classroom. So to access this, just click on these three dots right here and click on apply visual effects. Now the first thing we're gonna have is just to blur the background, which you can do just by clicking on this. 
or we can add different backgrounds. Here there are a lot of different options and this is probably what's gonna be most interesting for your students is to change their appearance completely in the call. So for example, if we click on dog, we've now got my complete head covered as a dog. Woof, woof. If we go to our students view, they can then see me as a dog and they can also choose the same filters as well. If you have students that are absent for a class online and you'd like them to watch the class back, then there is an option to record the Google Meet meeting. Now, currently the free Google Meet version does not have the option built in to record the meeting itself, so you're gonna have to use an extension. Let me show you how you get access to those extensions. All we need to do is click on this little button here which says extensions. If you don't see this, then we can also go to the three dots right here, go to more tools and go to extensions. We're gonna click on here and, and we wanna click on the left hand side and go right down to the bottom to the open Chrome web store. And here all we're gonna do is search the store for a screen recorder for Google Meet. TLDV, this looks like a good option for recording my meetings. So I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna add this to Chrome. And with now the extension installed, when I start a new meeting, I'll have this option here to record and highlight my meeting. So I click on this, it's currently recording the meeting, then I'm gonna click on stop and save, and it's gonna save the recording. Now that I'm on the website for the extension, I can see that I've recorded my meeting and I can create a link to share with my students. Now, before your students join a meeting, you probably saw that they had an option to change their name. If you as the teacher would like to also change your name that appears in your Google Meet meeting, you're gonna to have to go to your Google account settings. This is accessed by going to your Google profile in the top right hand corner right here, going to manage your Google account, click on personal info and go to your name. Now here is my name according to Google. So all I need to do is click on this pencil button and this would give me the option to change my name to any name I'd like to appear on Google Meet. Thank you for watching this tutorial on Google Meet for the year 2023. I hope that this video has helped you and that you can now provide your students a much better online experience. I'll see you in the next video.